Okay, so it's time for the all-important marriage of the transmission, which is here, and my motor, which is here. Um, this is a 7 8 shaft, as is this on the outside. The inside's smaller with the splines, but the outside of the splines are 7 8 This is the original piece that came between the transmission and the um, drive axle. I'll have to get another one of these on eBay, but they're fairly easy to get. Uh, I plan on putting this on this side, just like that, and this which is a weld-on type 7 8 hub to get these, uh, um, I get this tractor supply, but you can get it in a couple of different places. This will go under my main shaft once I get it shortened. There's a little clip in the way here. But uh, it'll go on here. I'll cut it here and get rid of this little C-clip thing. And, uh, and that'll sit down there. So I'll have a little bit of shaft protruding out. I will trim the shaft down to probably down to here actually because I don't need the whole length of it. It'll allow this to be sitting a little proud. So I'll weld this just like that. But before I do that, I want to get the drilling done. Um, so this is what needs to happen. This is the best I could come up with. I was going to use a pulley, but where the seam lined up on the pulley, it was going to be hard to drill accurately. But if you look at this in, in view, you can see that I, I'm going to be able to get it pretty darn close. I'm going to leave a little bit of slop. I'm going to make these holes slightly bigger, these holes that I drill. Um, and uh, that'll allow it to have a little bit of adjustment. So once I power up the motor and if, if I see if it's got wall, uh, uh, any kind of a shake to it, I will loosen the bolts and try to get it adjusted. But that's about the best I can do. Um, I do have some flexible connection here which will give me a little bit of breathing room. This is actually has some play in it. Um, I don't know how much you can see that on the camera, but so there's some flex there, which is good. So I've, I've got some flexibility. So the biggest thing is getting this as accurate as I possibly can. And by the way, I'm, because this sits a little proud, um, this piece is a little high. I'm going to put in some nylon nuts, uh, which probably be these guys, because I have some of these kicking around, which will yet again give me just a little bit of flexibility, um, I'll have to drill these up to the appropriate size, but, so, let's get started. So I bet you're wondering how exactly I'm going to get this centered as possible, enter Jeep Caliper. Um, so it's right now, it's right on the money as far as close as I can get with this caliper. So I'm using the very end of it and I'm going against the bolt surface or the uh, the rubber surface which is right on this one. Sorry, I gotta go keep checking back and forth to see. And I'm pressing against the center of the tooth as centered as I can get and getting the flange of the tool right up against it. Oh, I went a little past it. like so and checking each side back and forth um, multiple times going here 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 at the bolt positions until they're all reading the same number and of course I'm, I'm limited by my scale here I can only get so accurate but um, it's pretty close okay so here's what we got Notice that I've got a couple of marks of which direction I need to make it more accurate. Clamped it. This allows me to get my tool like this in a profile where I can see when I do this, for instance, see how I'm not, not square, but I can see the square line now with my tool. And then I can more accurately measure and I can say, okay, well, I need to go, I'm off by about uh, 10 thousandths, 10 thousandths of an inch at the moment in two directions. So instead of taking this off of here, I'm going to slacken um, the clamps just a little bit and try tapping it with a hammer real lightly to see if that does what I want it to do to move over. So I actually didn't even loosen up the clamps, I just tapped it with a hammer, a real small hammer, on one tooth. I used my direction arrows to know which way to go and moved it just, just to where I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these clamps as much as they will without breaking them to try to really stabilize this baby 
and I may even put it in the vise. So here's a view clamp in the vise of my system here. I'm going to go ahead and drill this first hole. What I'm going to do is it's a 5 16 bit and it is just the right size. Because I'm going to go using this, this is my guide to get a nice straight hole. I'm not going to go all the way through because it would tend to move it. Is I'm going to, just going to get it far enough that I can make a mark big enough for the bit and the bottom of the hole. Here we go. Here's the desired result on hole number one. I'm going to do this on the subsequent holes. And I'm going to be really careful and check after each hole that I'm still dead center because the nature of this is that if I don't get the uh, tip started exactly in the center, then I can my leverage left to right, since I'm not using a drill press, could potentially move it over a, a thousandth of an in inch or so. Which I'm hoping not because uh, which is slightly out of the frame is that this is in the vise and it's got uh, four other clamping points, but uh, it's too important to risk, so I'm going to keep checking. So there you have it. Uh, four holes. I'm going to get it bolted up. Okay, so here's what we got. We got a six volt battery running it. I welded here, just tacked for now. Bolts. Uh, I use these spacers. I had to reshape one. We'll talk about that in a second. Here it is at low speed RPM. As you can see from the video, it is extremely close right now to being right on the money. And this is a very low RPM. This is probably, I don't know, I can slow it down with my hand too. Um, but it's a very slow RPM. We've got good, a very straight looking connection. Uh, in fact, over here, the shaft looks less straight than it does here, uh, which is actually not bad. So how did I get here? So what I did is I took this pen uh, marker and I held it in a given position right here. And as I did, as the motor's spinning, I'm slowly moving in, keeping the pen in, con uh, pen in contact with the floor, this marker actually, and then until I can just feel it touching the tip. And as soon as it touches the tip, I hold there. Which is right there, and then I shut the motor off. And then I look at my shaft here until I find the mark. Of course, sometimes you don't get a good enough mark. So you try again. So, here we go. I'll do it again. I'm using the outermost point, which would be the one that would exaggerate the out of, uh, out of trueness of this. So, if I could actually, if I had a shaft 10 feet long, it'd be better, but this is good enough. So, I'm going to mark it again. Okay, so here's my mark right here. It's real faint, hard to see, but I can see it from where my vantage point. And there's not one anywhere else. So that tells me that it's still just a little bit in that one spot too close to me. So what I've done is I've taken a dial caliper here to get this figure out to get the wall up out of it because before it had more of it, it was kind of doing this but I didn't think it was out of true I think it was just that it wasn't flat to this plane so I took these two two planes I have a plane here and a plane here that are flat I take my dial my calipers I'll move it into the frame so you can see it now I'll take a measurement right along here and I did this at every bolt head and I had to actually take one of these and, and adjust it. I had to take some, take the grinder and take a little, this little washer, take it down a little bit with the grinder on one that was just too high. And now that I did that, I've really got most of the wall up out of it within a very, very close margin. So, as of right now, it's got the tiniest little bit of walk in it. Um, Okay, so here it is wired to the 12 volt battery. I'm not going to let it run too long. Actually, my, little, my field wire came off. <laughs> I'm not going to let it run too long because this can overspin at this voltage. But I'm really not feeling or hearing much in the way of vibration. So I'm happy with this. 
this is going to be good enough because I've got some slop in the, in the shaft of the transmission. So there you go. Um, garage mechanic, no drill press, uh, a cheap plastic set of calipers. Uh, you can do this. You can get um, as close as you need to be uh, with some garage tools and some know-how. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Um, there's going to be a lot more on this topic, obviously. I've got a long ways to go.